All right, before we get into a proper comic book haul, we have ourselves a few items here. Let's start off with some Transformers, G1 Transformers related merchandise here. I think this is cool as hell. I think I got this for 20 bucks, but this is a while ago, so I can't really remember, but this is the Transformers Stick and Play. Uh, it's like a, it's like you just place the, you peel off these stickers here and then place them anywhere in this book for, uh, and you get to look at it. Sweet. Okay. But I found a sealed one. And what I like about these, these are lenticular and it's funny comic books just caught on to this a few years ago, but, uh, They've been doing this for a while. Look at that. Ooh. So, vehicle form. Robot form. Yeah, that's so cool. What else is here? Uh, we can look at the back. If you like to pause it <laughs> to read it for whatever reason. Okay. Uh, as a learning toy, this book... Develops the child's creativity, imagination, organization skills, and sense of spatial relationships. It improves finger dexterity and develops... Uh, damn, they trying to, they really trying to sell this thing. <laughs> All right, good for them. All right, uh, I just thought this was cool. I love G1-related stuff like this. This is cool. All right, next we have uh, some cassette tapes that I bought. Uh, this is probably one of my favorite albums. We have Culture Club, Color by Numbers, uh, with Karma Chameleon. It's a miracle every time I come across a super sweet deal. I can't help but think of the tune. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. It's a I can't help but sing a few bars of that. Um... We have a sealed color by numbers and uh, the Above the Rim soundtrack. This is definitely one of my favorite albums here. I remember, uh, I remember you couldn't go to a party in 1994 where this was not playing. I remember this. And, you and it has the extra... Uh, Tupac Payne, probably his best song. Uh, what is this? Uh, oh, yeah, Gotta Get My Money Right and uh, Loyal to the Game. Probably Tupac's other best song. So, yeah, great, great album, man. I've worn this, I've, I've listened to this soundtrack just so many times. Even, even recently, I, still a great, still a great album. And... I thought this was cool. I got this for, uh, I think, like 10 bucks at a store. We have the Miami Vice soundtrack, second volume of the Miami Vice soundtrack. You have uh, Crockett and Tubbs and a, what is this, a Lamborghini? Yeah, a Lamborghini or Ferrari, I forgot. But uh, I don't know, it was still sealed. I figured I'd pick it up. It just looks cool. I love some Crockett in tubs all right now we're going to get into a proper comic book haul let's adjust our sets let's adjust our cameras boom love romances okay so what's going on here these are just a handful of books i picked up over the weekend uh, love romances number 101 and you know what i even wrote notes for these hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on okay so uh, this is from 1962. This is a Jack Kirby cover. So uh, this is 1962. So that means that uh, the superhero stuff, the Marvel's revamped superhero, uh, you know, like the Fantastic Four, they were going long and strong. And in between the superhero stuff that Jack Kirby was doing, uh, they had him, he was still doing romance books oddly enough okay all right you do your thing they were they were working jack kirby like an old virginia slave <laughs> so at some point he was like kirby won free <laughs> anyway 
anyway, um, okay, so I picked up a handful of romance books for $50. So this was in this lot. Okay, uh, the last time, uh, so I want to go through what this book has gone for. Okay, so in 2018, uh, the last time I think this book actually came up, uh, there was a $255 price on this, and it was in a fine. I would say this is a VG. There's like a tear that runs throughout. There's a tear that runs throughout right here, and it goes all the way through the pages to the back page. So it's like kind of like more like a cut tear. You know, this is a very, 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 very solid book very solid good looking book and you know just something you really don't come across too often and in 2017 i was checking my uh, ebay archive site and uh, there was one that sold for 103 and it was a vg okay so and there are no copies of this book on ebay right now so yeah, all right. Interesting enough. Interesting enough. All right, let's go. Let's move on to Charlton. We have romantic story number thirty. This is from nineteen fifty seven, and the only thing that I can find on this. So let's see. Let's see who did the cover. This is a good looking cover. Don D. I'm not pronouncing that. Nope, 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 nope. You ain't catching me trying to pronounce that name. Nope, 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 nope. All right, all right. So, romantic story number 30 from 1957. The only thing that I could see on this was that there was a sale in 2017 uh, for $41. All right, so, I mean, these are some really scarce uh, romance books here. And really good covers, too. You know, boy, I'm a sucker for a, uh, I'm a sucker for a woman in a red dress on a comic book. And this is a good one. It just great colors, man. This is a fun, fun cover. And here's one. This one, these are both in really, really solid condition. This one here is a little beat, but it's a great cover. I, I have to um, I, I have to suspect that this is a Matt Baker cover. It looks it looks a uh, hella Matt Baker is, you know what I'm saying? But I really couldn't find too much info on this. So we have Dear Lonely Heart number three so this is december 1951 i mean again this is this thing is beat but i love this cover and it still seemed worth picking up you know just for the hell of it you know beautiful cover but yeah look at that dear lonely heart number three from 1951 so these so these first two books here these were some silver agers and this here is a uh, golden age a late golden age book later golden age book how about that um, I suspect that it's a matt baker cover and the what what could i find on this yeah nothing i couldn't find anything could not find any info couldn't find any sales uh from what i could from what i remember let's see i'm, I'm looking at my notes here and yeah i i just couldn't find anything on this so, yeah, all right. I mean, even in this rough shape, the cover, you know, like the main meat of the image is still there. So it's worth picking up. And what else? Oh, we have another Silver Age romance. We have Heartthrobs, number 79. So this is creeping up on classic Silver Age romance cover um just a you know striking image great colors great composition you know I, I, and i noticed that this book goes th this is a brisk seller how about that okay so this is 1962 actually i from what i remember 
from what I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, the love romances and heartthrobs, they both came out the exact same month, the exact same year. So September 1962. So both of these are September 1962. And what more did I want to say? So this is a John Ramita Sr. cover. Even though John Ramita Sr. and Jr. both have different middle names. So technically they're not Sr. and Jr. But... Mm, I, I didn't want somebody chiming in in the comments. Well, actually, they're not really. They have different middle names, so they're not senior and junior. Duh. Ugh. Anyway, <laughs> let me cut them off at the pass. Heartthrobs, number 79 from 1962. This is a John Ramita senior cover. Uh, the last Buy It Now, the, well, the last sales for this recently, recently, Probably within the last couple of months, there was a buy it now for fifty, and it was a VG, and it was a VG copy. I would say this book is probably, it's solid. It's very solid. I would say like a VG, like a VG plus. Uh, you know, I, I would say with the exception of this dear lonely hearts, all of these here have the. Are there the staples are all attached? No centerfold detachments or anything like that. Very solid copies. The other one was an auction, a VG copy that sold for $154. So this is a really, this is a very, very, very respectable book. And throughout the years, the most that I've seen this thing go for was $225 in 2018. And it was like a VF fine copy, you know. So yeah, this is a very, very respectable book here. Heartthrobs number 79 from 1962. Good looking book. All right, what's next? Uh, okay, so we're going to file this book under. This is a this is a copy of a book that I am finally happy with. So we have, Tor well, actually, it's for Dell, Dell, four color. Number 596. This is the first appearance of Torok. I, I, I know him and love him as Torok Dinosaur Hunter, if you're a Valiant fan. But uh, he started off as Torok Son of Stone. And let's see. And a lot of people forget, this is a Golden Age book. This is 1954. This is still technically the Golden Age. And to find a Golden Age book in this condition is no small feat. Look at this. Now, the first two copies that I have, that I have of this, or rather that I bought, the first one was in probably not too dissimilar condition than this one. But the way the guy shipped the book, the staple popped at the top. And I'm just like, you got to be kidding me. But I pay, But it was cheap enough. To where it wasn't, you know, I guess it wasn't that big of a deal. And then I came across another copy. Where is it? Where is it? Eh, it's somewhere around here. That is in really, really rough condition. Even though the staples are attached. But it's like heavily water damage and frayed. And, you know, just, it's a mess. But this one here, look at this. Look at this. Ooh, baby. I would take it out. I really don't want to handle this book all like that. So I, I got this. I don't, I wouldn't even know what grade this would be, but look at that. Oh gosh, this is a beauty. Look, solid, deep colors, very high grade. I got this for $600. I figured uh, th this thing isn't gonna, this thing isn't, I don't know if I'm gonna come across a high grade copy like this anytime so did i want to pay six hundred dollars hell no absolutely not but this is a copy that i'm happy with and i can just kind of file away <laughs> you know what i mean I'm, I'm happy with this so four color number 596 and also on the same day i went to a flea market that was doing a, a i guess you could say a comic book show comic book convention i don't know what you would call it but 
I, I, it was a, it was technically a toy comic book show. I, yeah, okay, all right. It was, it was, it was run by a flea market, so I, you can kind of guess what was going on there. But there was a guy with a box of Star Wars stuff, and the weird thing was, all the Star Wars stuff was the stuff that had price tags on them. Like they were they were comparable to eBay prices. You know what I mean? So this threw me. So when I saw this and this didn't have a price tag on it and it's a newsstand, it threw me a little bit. You know what I mean? So I was almost afraid to ask how much this was, but he was just like, well, make an offer. And I'm like, oh crap, here we go. <laughs> here we go. So I'm staring at this thing. I'm like, uh, you know, because I'm trying to work up because I'm going to lowball him. And but I didn't want to lowball him enough to where he would shut down. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just like, all right, how about how about two hundred dollars? And he's like, OK, and I'm just like, shit, it, I, he it's a pretty good chance. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. It's a pretty good chance. He would have um, accepted even lower. You know what I mean? So I'm like, yeah, crap. But uh, I'm happy. I paid, what, $200 for a newsstand copy of uh, The Clone Wars. And here's the 9-0 copy that I have. And I'm looking at this. So I'm looking at the 9-0 copy. I'm looking at this raw copy here. And honestly, these aren't... This this raw copy here doesn't look any worse than this 9.0 copy. I mean, these look da damn. These look damn near identical in condition. And I would say, yeah, it's like it's weird. Like both of these are in really similar condition. Wow. I would say I would give the edge maybe to this to this raw copy because I noticed like there's kind of like a like a little bit of edge wear in this corner and even at the bottom here there's edge wear here where this is a little a little bit more solid you know so yeah all right maybe I have a 9-0 copy what do you think what do you think what say you all right What's next? What's next? What's next? I went to a... I'm not sure what the hell you call it. Maybe it was a sale. I don't know. I don't know. But this was a couple of weeks ago, so I'm getting around to showing these off. So we have the Max number 35. So the Max number 35 and 34. The final issues of this series, of course, very, very tough to find. And I would say these are probably near mint condition. Not, I don't want to say nine eights or anything like that, but they're they you know they're near mint copies. Uh, we got both of these for we got both of these for three dollars a piece. I don't know how that was. I don't know how that happened, but it did. So the max number thirty four and thirty five for three dollars a piece. I know this one is an easy hundred dollar book. And I know number 35 is roughly a roughly a $30 book. So yeah, final issue in the series, really tough to find. I remember coming across this book a few years ago and uh, selling it. But hey, we got it back. We got it back. We're full circle. Books that boomerang on you. All right, the max number 35. Here is a great great looking cover i saw this cover for five bucks and immediately fell in love with it so we have x 23 number one so i believe this is the what 20 what is this is this the 2018 series i forget i don't know i wait, wait. i don't know i don't know what number this i i, I don't know what year this came out because there's just so many x 23 volumes and all that but this is I, I guess this is a recent one it has to be but uh this is i believe i believe this is a store variant and i'm not that big on store variants but i freaking love this cover damn so we got this for five dollars 
and I don't know what more to really say about it. It's in really, really, really solid condition. Probably should have put this thing in some mylar to try to protect it even more because this this thing is black. As many of you know, I am a comic book white supremacist. I love my comic book covers nice and white, but I am also very much a black activist. And I love the blackness. I love the El Negro ability of this cover here. Good looking, good looking book. You have a translucent X23 and uh, Wolverine Logan, the real Wolverine, in, in her body. <laughs> There's an action scene in the shape of X-23. Okay, all right, I'm down with that. I like this cover. Love it, love it, love it. So Tyler Kirkham, and Tyler Kirkham is the guy that's, um, that is, that, that's doing all of those hyper-violent, invincible covers. So this one is really awesome. Love it, love it, love it. All right, what's next? I'm not quite sure why I bought this, and I meant to look this up before, I did this video, but uh, we have Star Wars Jedi versus Sith number three. From what I remember, I think this is the first cover appearance of this character here. Well, you know what? Let's look this up. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's look this up. Let's look this up. I don't have my iPad with me. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's look this up. All right. So Jedi versus Sith number three. Three G E D I versus S I T H Sith S yeah Sith. I thought I was saying shit. Okay, so yeah, first cover of Darth Bane, but I can't believe I would pay ten dollars for this though. This doesn't feel right. I mean, it, I, I guess the book goes for about twenty to thirty, but I don't know. Ten seems like a lot to me. Or it seems like a lot for me. How about that? All right. Okay. All right. I couldn't believe I bought it because I remember seeing it there. And and this has been a while. This has been a couple of weeks. So when I saw it in the pile of books that I bought, I'm like, oh, okay. All right. What's next? Ferris. Let's do some Adam. Let's give uh, Adam Hughes some love. So we have a Ferris number five. Ferris number five. Beautiful cover. Um, I, I really, I, I, I believe this book goes for a little, I think, I think this one, well, I, I mean, all of these, you know, Adam Hughes covers, they kind of do something, you know, but you have Ferris number 19. Let's look this up. Let's look this up. S screw it. Screw it. Hold on. Hold on. F-A-I-R-E-S-T 19. H U G H E S. Uh, yeah, roughly. So this is roughly number nineteen is roughly a I don't know, like a five dollar book or something like that. It's a it's a steady seller. Let's look up. Let's look up number number ten. Now this is a good cover right here. Fairest number ten, looking very Rapunzel ish. Let's look this one up. Fairest 10. And, hmm, let's see. It really doesn't go for that much. All right, it's okay. <laughs> I found these for a dollar. Oh, I forgot to say. Uh, these were a dollar. These were a dollar. So, Ferris 19, Ferris 10, um, Ferris number four. Five. Let's look this one up. Let's see what this one is going for. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Ferris number five. These are really good covers. Ferris number five. You know, roughly a cover price book. But this one here, I think this one might be the standout. So we have Ferris number 33. Now, I know this one goes for roughly 20 bucks. And uh, yeah, great scene, great cover. Very, you know, just something a little different, different, you know. 
So yeah. Yeah, I I noticed a sale for this a few weeks ago and I had and I had it on my want list ever since. So I finally come across came across a copy for uh a dollar and I know this one goes for about 20. So, yeah, good looking cover. Hell yeah. Do your thing, girl. All right, and we're rounding the bases and heading home. Uh, we have Amazing Spidey number 503 and 504. This is the storyline where you we have the introduction of Loki's daughter. You know what? You know what? You know what? So the I think I paid like $3 a piece for these. Let's open this boy up. Let's see what's happening. Let's see where if we can find Loki's daughter because honestly, I haven't even opened this book up. Oh, there she is right here. There she is. No, she's all up in this book. It's, it's no cameo appearance here. This is no cameo. All right, sweet. Here she is. Boop. She's getting ready to. She's getting ready to murder somebody. Ooh wee. Don't come near me. <laughs> okay, sweet. All right, so that's my haul. Uh, I do have some more books to show, so stay tuned for that. And uh, if you're if you're into the movie thing, the movie tape thing, uh, the next video I'll do of that is laser discs. I have I've have some really cool ones, some possibly really expensive ones. So uh, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time. All right, bye.